Here we are with a brand new mental health video. David Kendrick, a new place in my location, a new background. Obviously, for those of you who don't know, I am a Purple Heart veteran. That's why we have Old Glory hanging in the background here. And I like the way that this setup is in this new in this new place that uh, I'm going to shoot my videos. So today's mental health talk is going to be about the mental health of athletes because it seems to be a really big subject lately and uh, I, I spoke about well I wrote a blog about this a couple years ago when it comes to a certain athlete that I'm going to get into a little bit later on but in the in the media well at least on these uh, take shows like all the shows you see early in the mornings on ESPN, Fox Sports, CBS, things like that. People give their take, their take on some of the things that well-known athletes are going through. So I'm going to talk about what I think about these issues because obviously I speak about mental health. And as a veteran, I deal with mental health myself. And I love to advocate for those who deal with mental health. So let's get right into it. Ben Simmons right now isn't playing. He got traded from Brooklyn Nets to... No, he got traded from the Philadelphia 76ers to the Brooklyn Nets. And there were some reports from all these different... All these different sports reporters... And their sources and stuff like that saying that it may be a legitimate issue or it may be because mentally he's not ready to play yet. Another mental health issue that has been in the news recently is the tennis player from Japan, Naomi Osaki. And forgive me if I said your name wrong, her name wrong. She was heckled by someone in the audience at a recent event that she had and she had interviews, she had tears in her eyes and I don't know exactly what she said. However, her game was a little bit off and she said something to that heckler and things of that nature. And then we have Mr. Russell Westbrook who plays for the Los Angeles Lakers who was in the news recently because they called him Westbrook. Now, he doesn't have the mental health, well, it's not even a mental health issue with him uh, or uh, his wife or his kids. It's just so many of these sports reporters and these per, uh, media personalities are calling him Westbrook or West Brick instead of Westbrook that he, his wife came to his defense and said, hey, that's not his name. You know, I'm West, I'm Mrs. Westbrook, yada, yada, yada. My, my kids are being impacted by this now. He said, I can't bring my kids to games, things like that. So I'm going to talk about mental health when it comes to these professional athletes. And I just want opinions. Uh, I'm going to give, I'm not going to give my opinion uh, because I've never played anything professionally. I'm going to relate it to what I do professionally. But just want to get some conversation going down there in the comments. So let's begin. First, these athletes who play these sports, they're paid millions upon millions of dollars to do so. They have these million dollar uh, sponsorships from Nike, Reebok, Adidas, Under Armour, whatever, because of how good they play. Because the more people that watch them, the more people are gonna watch the advertisements that, or the products that they choose to endorse. Now, I heard a lot of people, well, I've talked with a lot of people who say, well, they're getting paid millions of dollars. They should be able to deal with that trauma or with that, with, with the heckling and things of that nature. Now, let me talk about that. A lot of these sports personalities that I see on TV, they talk about the supreme athletes, Michael Jordan, uh, LeBron James, Tom Brady, uh, Troy Aikman from back in the day, you know, uh, uh, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, who get heckled and deal with all this pressure coming from us 
from left to right, you know, in front of us and back of us, and they still perform at the ultimate level. Now, when it comes to mental health, is it, when, when it comes to mental health for these professional athletes, is it part of the job, or is it personal, depending on each individual personality? Because someone like LeBron James, he gets the most scrutiny every single day. No matter if he does any, something right or something wrong, he's going to get scrutinized. However, he's still, at, I believe, age 37, he still is one of the top three players in the NBA right now. And it seems like, to me, he lets those comments and things like that roll right off his shoulder. Opposed to someone, let's say, and I don't know these people personally, obviously, but let's say someone like like Ben Simmons, who may not let these insults, these comments, these sports reports, and everything on TV every day, let, let, they, he may not let it roll off their shoulders. Maybe it impacts him, and it impacts his game. A lot of people that I've talked to in the barbershops, on the streets, they say, well, you know, these players get paid millions of dollars. They should be able to perform no matter what. And I just want to get y'all opinion. Is that is that the case or what? Are these people with these superhuman abilities, should they also have superhuman minds? Because we can watch LeBron James score 50 points in, in a week. I think like he did just last week or the week before that. Or we can watch, um, I don't even know what other sports are going on right now. But we can watch a lot of different athletes perform at their best when things are going good for them. However, when they face adversity, that mental adversity, you know, it, some of them choose to you know, step away for a little bit for their mental health. Some of them, they sit on the bench and support their teams and things like that. Um, is Do you think that the millions of dollars that they get paid also is an excuse for them to, for their minds to be these steel traps that bounce all the negative talk off their brains. And no matter what anybody says, you play because you're getting paid these millions of dollars. Um, an, an example that I would like to use is uh, Miss Simone Biles. A lot of people know her. She came up in the spotlight a couple years ago because of how good she is with uh, in gymnastics. And I believe in the Summer Olympics a couple of years ago, she refused, or she didn't refuse, she just bowed out respectfully. She didn't want to participate. Don't know her personally. She didn't give a reason. She, has, she doesn't have to. This is only me giving my hypothesis on the subject. But, uh, but the more popular you are, especially in sports and an event that only comes once every four years, like the Summer Olympics, just like the Winter Olympics, the more eyes you have on you and the more pressure you put on yourself because of the pressure that people on the outside put on you. And everything that you do when the entire world is watching you is magnified, including your good performances, but also your bad performances. Let me tell you how I know this. I'm a professional speaker. I speak about mental health professionally. I get on stage. There is no team. There is no coach. It's just me, that microphone, this big stage and however many people are watching me speak all eyes are on me okay if there are 50 people in the audience it's a hundred eyeballs just on you on that stage and everything you do is magnified because you have all these eyes watching you and if you ever spoke if you're a professional speaker you definitely know what I'm talking about. 
But if you if you've ever given a speech like in an auditorium setting or anything like that, those seats sometimes they go up. They're rows and rows and rows and rows that go up like a movie theater. And not only are people looking at you, they're looking down upon you. And you have these lights on you, just like I have these lights on me right now. You're sweating under that heat from the lights, and then you're sweating because everybody is looking at you. And now, in this day and age, everybody has their phone out. Some people may be on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, recording you. You may have, if you're a good professional speaker, like I am, you may have the news uh, in, in, the, in the audience recording you. Everything is magnified. And one small mistake, depending on what you have up here, it can be the end of the world for you. So with Mrs. Simone Biles, I can imagine how much pressure she felt because of how good she is at her sport. And it's kind of like suffering from your own success. It's almost like America is telling you that you're not allowed to make a mistake. I can't even imagine how much pressure she had on herself because she's representing an entire country. This red, white, and blue right here. And one mistake that she makes, the entire country may come down upon her because you're supposed to be the best. You're you're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be that. Yada, 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 yada. However, to play devil's advocate, there are, some, there are some people that say, I don't care. She makes millions of dollars. She's supposed to perform at, her high, at the highest level. She's supposed to make comments and whatever these sports reporters say, go in one ear, out the other. In one ear, through the brain, out the other. However, that's when you have to separate the athlete from the person. Because we're always, these athletes, they're always not athletes. They come home to their wives, their children, their family, their friends, their mothers, their fathers. And then they're just Simone, or Naomi, or LeBron, or KD, Kyrie. Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholson, you know, they're just people at the end of the day, just like you and I. They have feelings just like you and I. To go into another subject under this big umbrella of mental health when it comes to athletes are those athletes who may use mental health as a cop-out. Because we can't see what we can nobody can see what's going on in here. Nobody can. And even with the athletes having access to doctors and therapists and hospitals and surgeons that the average person could only dream of, they don't have to go to them. There's no one forcing these forcing these athletes to go see these professionals. If if someone says they need time off for their mental health, I'm pretty sure that these leagues let them take it. I live in Atlanta. I believe uh, Calvin Ridley, before he was suspended, said he needed to take time off for his mental health. And I believe the Falcons gave it to him. They gave it to him. Because these, these sports organizations, they're going to do whatever it takes for these prime athletes to perform to the best of their abilities. And if you need a game or two off for your mental health, take it. As long as you can come back and, hey, you can score 30 points in a game or you can catch two touchdown passes or you can rush for 80 yards or, I don't know, you can hit a hole in one. I don't know anything about any of the sports like that. You're good. Take all the time off you need, right? I know Dak, Dak Prescott, he has something on his wristband um, about mental health. I'm not sure what it was about, but I do know that uh, a couple years ago on a certain sports show, there was a sports journalist who questioned uh, what his mental health was. And he said something about, 
other athletes on the field saying, you like that, Dad? You like that? Is it going to impact your mental health? Now, he got scrutinized, but what he said was completely true. If you show any weakness, especially up here, people are going to go for it. Just like who? I believe Pat Beverly in the NBA. You have these mental assassins who, they go for your weak spots. They know how to push your buttons to get a technical foul and things like that because they may see an athlete as mentally weak. And they know what buttons to push in order to put their team or themselves in a better position by pushing those mental health buttons. Right? So back to the original question. These athletes are getting paid millions of dollars. Are they getting paid millions of dollars to have premium mental health as well? To have everything that they hear go in one ear, out the other? See what I got on right now? My Bills Mafia gear, you know, I got on my hat. I got on my jersey, number 17, Mr. Josh Allen. As a Buffalo Bills fan in the playoffs, we lost to Kansas City. Overtime to 13 seconds, yada, yada, yada. It was heartbreaking to me as a Buffalo Bills fan. I'm not even a player, and it was heartbreaking to me. But imagine what Josh Allen felt, because he didn't even get a chance to get the ball back in overtime. However, this man, my quarterback, didn't complain, didn't say anything. Mine was a steel trap. You know what? We lost. I'm going to shake Patrick Mahomes' hand. And I'm going to continue to be Josh Allen. Now, me as a fan, I was heartbroken. Oh, my God. People came for me on Facebook left to right to the point where, honestly, I had to get off for a little bit for my own mental health. And I'm not employed by the Buffalo Bills in any way whatsoever. However, it killed me. They can only imagine... What the team, what the team was going through, Josh Allen, Devil, Devin Singletary, Trevor Knox, Gabriel Davis, who broke the NFL record for production, yards, touchdowns in a playoff game, in a loss where they didn't even get to see the ball again. It was crushing for me. However, that whole team showed their their character, their integrity. And it didn't seem to phase their mental health. So, I don't want to keep these videos too long. So, I'm going to cut it short of 20 minutes. But, I would love to get some, some conversation going about these athletes and their mental health. What's expected of them? And, is the athlete expected to be separate from the person and their mental health or is it all one athlete mental health performance y'all let me know what y'all think I'm out visit me at www.dkendrickjr.com and just stay tuned for more great content